Power, money, ego, partying, even alcohol. Explosive allegations of what's going on behind closed doors at one of America's largest charities entrusted with hundreds of millions of donor dollars every year. The Wounded Warrior Project is the nation's best-known veteran service organization headquartered here in Jacksonville. News 4 Jax talked with three former employees about reports of lavish spending, the warrior programs, and the culture at the Wounded Warrior Project. Only one would show his face. The other two, so fearful of retaliation, we agreed to conceal their identity. News 4 Jax investigator Lindsay Gardner spent weeks investigating these allegations and took mounting concerns to the Wounded Warrior Project leadership. She's joining us now with her findings. Lindsay. Well, I've tried for weeks now to take my questions to the CEO of the Wounded Warrior Project or any senior management since mid-January, but I've been told their schedules are too busy. Instead of giving us access to any executive, they seem to want to focus our attention only on the work Wounded Warrior Project has done helping our veterans. They did provide one local Wounded Warrior who talked about the help that he received from the Wounded Warrior Project, calling their programs life-changing. What Wounded Warrior Project has not answered for us are the questions about how the charity raises and spends its money. This man, rappelling down the side of a building, is the CEO of the Wounded Warrior Project, Steve Nardizi. And the building, a luxurious five-star resort in Colorado Springs, the Broadmoor. The event in 2014, not a fundraiser, but a retreat for the charity's employees. Hundreds of them flown in from all across the country. News 4 Jax also obtained this photo of the charity's senior management driving a Jeep inside the Broadmoor. The team building trip is known as the All Hands Huddle, and it happens every year. You know, we go on these big trips, which is everybody knows it was a big drunk fest. Everybody left there either hung over or tired because they partied all night, but never going, oh wow, that's changed lives. Here's a snapshot of Nardizi riding a horse into another all-hands retreat at a Texas resort hotel in 2012. The year before, riding a Segway through the fake fog at an Orlando hotel. Many of us thought it was so extravagant and, and there was no need for it. And I remember <laughs> new employees were like, <clears throat> I feel kind of funny because this is just too much for me. It's perception which they don't understand. Both women admit the charity terminated them. They say in part for voicing concerns over spending, but they say they were just part of continuous massive turnover. Currently, Wounded Warrior Project confirmed to us turnover among its 600 employees at more than 20% a year. If you rock the bus, as they say, you were off the bus. We'll call these two former employees Carol and Sandra. They worked here on Jacksonville South Side for years inside the Wounded Warrior Project headquarters, watching it grow from a small grassroots nonprofit to one of the largest veteran service organizations in America. In fact, Forbes magazine ranks the charity the 38th largest of all charities in the U.S. Both women say as it's grown, so has the excess and waste. I think they've gotten away from their core mission, which is those six words, honoring and empowering wounded warriors. Eric Millette, a wounded warrior himself, agrees. I would not encourage anybody to donate to Wounded Warrior Project. I was part of it, and I'm ashamed to say that. It's donor money wasted. Millette spent nearly two years traveling the country giving speeches under the charity's Warrior Speak program. He told the audience about his two deployments to Iraq and how he survived a blast of nine IEDs, being awarded a Purple Heart, a Bronze Star, and the Army Accommodation Medal with Valor. But after being on the inside, he says he quit because he was disgusted and disillusioned. Well, besides the all hands and the, the lavish spending, there is team building. Team building is not bowling. Team building is not going to Sweet Pete's and having a nice lunch and a bunch of drinks. Team building is not hanging out at the bar 
Wounded Warrior Project picking up the tab. Donor support for the charity has become explosive. In their first fiscal year of 2005 to 2006, the Wounded Warrior Project collected $10 million. By 2010, $40 million. Then donor dollars nearly began to double on the year. $70 million. Next, $148 million. Then $225 million. And $312 million by fiscal year 2014. And with that influx in cash, these three say, came a shift. I feel like they lost their focus. It was more on ego. Wounded Warrior Project CEO Steve Nardizzi is not a veteran, but a lawyer. He says he comes from a military family where his father and uncle both served in World War II. In the most recent financial statements, I uncovered Nardizi took home 496000 in salary and benefits. His number two, Al Giordano, making 424000 We found 10 other executives making up to $285,000 each, all paid with donations. An audit of that same year shows Wounded Warrior Project taking in an additional $88 million of in-kind contributions or goods and services on top of the $312 million in donations, bringing their total resources to more than $400 million. An independent nonprofit watchdog, Charity Watch, examined the same financials from the Wounded Warrior Project and rated them a C, finding 54% of their overall public donations actually went to programs. We found Wounded Warrior Project repeatedly disputes such financial criticisms on social media, claiming 80% of our spending directly funded our 20 programs and services. As much as they've done for me, my family, and a bunch of my friends, Friends, then I mean, it, it, it is surprising to see that they got to see. Jacksonville native Alex Brown was injured in Iraq as a Marine. He credits the Wounded Warrior Project with helping him deal with PTSD and a traumatic brain injury. From his perspective, controversy about fundraising and non program spending are unimportant. When I reached out to WWP, uh, it was a life changer, so they saved my life. Brown talked with us here inside the charity's Jacksonville headquarters. We were only allowed to speak with them at the Wounded Warrior Project if their cameras recorded our interview. What is the perception of Wounded Warrior Project amongst your fellow comrades? Um, it, it's about 50-50. I mean, you get 50% that know what, we, what they really stand for and what they really do, and then the other 50% badmouth them because you know, they have one bad experience. But these three former employees contend those events are where the buck stops for most veterans. It was kind of the glitz and glamour. Get them to a Jaguars game. Um, okay, so you did that. Did you do anything else for them? For Alex, he's proud to count himself amongst the charity's 83,000 alumni members. Do you believe the Wounded Warrior Project is helping every single one of their alumni members or even the vast majority? No way. No way. At the time, like a soldier ride, at that moment, it is help helping them. But then they go away. There's no follow-up care. There's no case management. There's a saying at Wounded Warrior Project, warriors call us, we don't call warriors. They're very, very welcoming and friendly. Um, I know they have like this big old, or a lot of people think they're not that, but they honestly are. It's like you just got to reach out. You can't just expect them to reach out to you. Eric hopes by telling his story, the nation's injured veterans will benefit. I hope that this story opens the eyes of a lot of people, mainly the donors. So let's put this in perspective for you tonight. How does Wounded Warrior Project rank compared to other nonprofits on Forbes' list that pull in similar big dollars in donations? Well, Doctors Without Borders was given an A by Charity Watch, spending 87% of their funding on programs. Toys for Tots rated an A- minus by Charity Watch, spending 83% on their programs. Again, Charity Watch giving Wounded Warrior Project a C rating, finding they are only spending 54% of all their monies on programs. But again, Wounded Warrior Project disputes that, putting that number at 80%.
Lindsay, you've also uncovered the lengths this charity will go to to protect its image, and I know you're going to have that for us tonight at 11, but would you give us a preview? Well, I got my hand right here on these two lawsuits filed by Wounded Warrior Project against former employees who were also injured veterans. I have details on that and a look at who else Wounded Warrior Project is going after in court. That's all new tonight at 11. Lindsay, thanks. We'll look for that.